Is this really good? Oh, shh. Quiet, please. Thank you for staying quiet, class. <clears throat> Hello, class. Welcome to this week's filmmaking lesson. I may not be here at Lewis College. I will be at um, Walt Disney World again to go to um, to Epcot World Showcase, including Harmonious and um, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And, um, and I'll be staying here at the hotel called... Um, I guess it's probably a Disney's Pop Century Resort. All right. On today, we will be doing home video releases. On today, so far, I'm sorry. Okay, on today, we will be doing Carlito's Way by Universal Studios Distribution 1993 film. Here's a plot in this film. In 1975, New York, after having served five years of a 30-year prison sentence, career criminal Carlito Brigant is freed on a legal techno technically, technically exploited by this by his close friend and lawyer Dave Plainfield. Carlito vows to end his unlawful activities, but is persuaded by to accompany his young cousin, Guayiro, to a drug deal held at a bar. Guayiro's suppliers would betray and kill him, forcing Carlito to shoot his way out. Later, Carlito takes Guayiro's $30,000 from the botched deal and uses, to, uses it to buy into a nightclub owned by a gambling addict named Sasso intending to save $75,000 to retire to the Caribbean. As nightclub co-owner Carlito declines several offers for his business, for a business partnership with a hot-headed young gangster from the Bronx named Benny Blanco, Carlito also recanless his romance for his former girlfriend Gal, Gail, a ballet dancer moonlighting uh, as a stripper, Plainfield develops a love interest with Benny's girlfriend, Steffi, a waitress at a club at the club. Benny's frustration with Carlito's constant rejections boils over that and he confronts Carlito one night at his table. Carlito publicly humiliates Benny, who reacts by manhandling. Steffi, fueled by his now extensive use of alcohol and cocaine, Kleinfeld brazenly pulls out a gun and threatens to kill Benny, but Carlito intervenes. Despite being personally threatened by Benny himself, Carlito lets him go unharmed, a decision which alienates Carlito's bodyguard Pachanga. Kleinfeld who stole one million dollars in payoff one money from his client Mafia, boss Anthony Taglio Lucy is co coerced into providing his yacht to help Taglio Lucy break out of the Rikers Island prison barge. Planfeld begs for Carlito's assistance in the prison break, and Carlito reluctantly agrees. That night, Carlito, Kleinfeld, and Taglia Lucy, son, Frankie, sailed to a floating buoy, buoy outside of a bar of the barge where Taglia Lucy is waiting. As they pull Taglia Lucy aboard, Kleinfeld kills him and Frankie and dumps their bodies in, in the East River, claiming that they would have would have killed him well anyway. He then smugly admits to steal, stealing Taglia Lucy's money, knowing mob retaliation is, is imminent. Carlito immediately severs, to be, to be, severs his ties with Kleinfeld and decides to leave town with Gal Gale. The next day, Kleinfeld barely survives a retaliatory assassination attempt in, at his office. 
The police apprehend Carlito, then take him to the office of District Attorney Norwalk, where he has played a tape of Kleinfeld offering a testify to testify to wall false criminal allegations against Carlito. Norwalk advises that he is aware that Carlito is an accomplice to the Taglia Lucy murders in an attempt to leverage him into betraying Kleinfeld, but Carlito refuses in the hospital. Carlito visits Kleinfeld, who confesses to selling him out, having noticed a suspicious man dressed in a police uniform waiting in the lobby. Carlito secretly unloads Kleinfeld's oil revolver and leaves. The man is Teclia Lucy's other son, Vinny, seeking vengeance for his brother and father after sending the officer already guarding Kleinfeld away. Vinny enters Kleinfeld's room and shoots him dead. Carlito buys train tickets to Miami for himself and Gail, now pregnant, when he stops by his club to get the stashed money. Carlito is met by a group of East Harlem and Italian gangsters led by Vinny. The Italians plan on killing Carlito, but he manages to slip out through a secret exit. The Italians pursue him throughout the city's subway system and into Grand Central Terminal, where they engage in a gunfight. Carlito kills all of his pursuers, except Vinny, whom the police shoot and kill. As Carlito runs to catch the train where Gail and Pachanga are waiting for him, Benny ambushes him and fatally shoots him several times with a silent gun. Pachanga admits to Carlito that he is now working with for Benny, but Benny then shoots him dead as well. Carlito hands a tearful Gail the money and tells her to escape with their unborn child and start a new life. Carlito is wheeled away on a gurney. To be taken to hospital, as he dies, Carlito stares at a billboard with a Caribbean beach and a picture of a woman. The billboard then comes to life in his mind, and the woman, now Gail, starts dancing. All right, on tomorrow we will be doing Crime Story, um, Crime Story, Tyson Twenty One film. Here's a plot in this film. Unfortunately, there is no plot. Let's moving on. All right. On Thursday, we will be doing the Escape Room Tournament of Championship Champions, 2021 film. Here's a plot in this film. After escaping the Soul Survivor Escape Rooms, orchestrated by the Minos Corporation, Zoe Davis and Ben Miller decide to confront the shadowy organization after finding coordinates to its New York City-based headquarters, Zoe is encouraged by their therapist to move on from, on from her trauma and to get over her aerophobia, but he, she uh, opts to drive with Ben instead of flying. The pair find the headquarters, they elect and are uh, accosted by a bar vagrant who steals Zoe's necklace. She and Ben give chase straight into the huge subway train. Their train car separates from the rest of the train and is redirected to a remote station, sealing Zoe, Ben, and other passengers, Rachel, Rihanna, Nathan, and Theo inside. As the passengers realize in horror that they are once again in Minos' daily game, the train becomes electrified. Zoe and Ben learn that the others are the winners to previous escape rooms, having survived them to escape. The group must collect subway tokens as the electrification increases. Theo is killed while the rest escape. Nathan reveals his escape room group were all priests. Rihanna's were all influencers. And Rachel's consisted of people who cannot feel physical pain. The next room is a bank with a slowly closing vault and a deadly laser secure security system. The group manages to decipher the complex route to get around the lasers 
and escape with it with just a second to spare, while in the room, Zoe's per perplexed by frequent references to someone called Sonia, and that the escape rooms have no apparent connection to the group unlike before. In the next room is a postcard-like beach with more references to Sonia. They discover that the beach is covered in, in quicksand. Nathan sacrifices himself to save Rachel and is swallowed up by the sand. Zoe finds an alternate route out just as Brianna unlocks the inten intended exit. An argument on which route to take breaks out. Rachel and Ben side with Zoe. Brianna escaping escapes through the main exit while Rachel and Ben traverse to the alternate route. Ben falls into the quicksand. Zoe and Rachel make their way out through the manhole back into the city. Overjoyed at first that they're outside. They quickly realize they are they are still in the game when they encounter a panicked Brianna, if they don't make it out of this room, acid rain is per per periodically periodically sprayed on them. Their group opens a taxi to escape into the into but once Zoe enters. The taxi locks Rachel and Brianna out. Zoe falls into the next room, while Rachel and Brianna succumb to the rain and die. The next room is a child's bedroom containing a diary from Sonia. Revealing the rooms are based on a fun day out she had with her mother. Zoe discovers Sonia's mother is Amanda Harper, who survived her fall in her original escape room and was forced into a designing room escape rooms for Minos after they abducted her daughter. Amanda appears and begs Zoe to become the next puzzle maker for Minos, warning that she is no has no choice. Ben is revealed to be a trap to be trapped in the cage. When Zoe refuses Minos, the men Ben and Ben's cage starts filling with water. But Zoe and Amanda work together to free him. They manage to break out, fleeing the facility. They report their findings to the police, who retrieve the bodies to Rachel, Brianna, Nathan, and Theo. The news about Nui and Minos goes public, and the FBI agent assures Zoe, that Minos will be tracked down. Filled with confidence, Zoe decides to take the plane home with Ben on board. She realizes their therapist was on it, is on, was on it, was then on it, and that the plane is another escape room. The game master mocks Zoe for falling into the latest trap as the plane begins to fall and sleeping gas filled with, filled his, fills the cabin. All right. On Friday, we will be doing Three Friends by Disney 20th Century Fox, 2021 film. Here's a plot in this film. Guy is a non-player character, NPC, in Free City, an open world video game developed by Tsunami Games, unaware that the world he lives in, 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 in his uh, video game. He works as a bank teller alongside his friend and the bank's security guard buddy, in a weird world, Ma Millie Rusk, who plays Motolo Molotov Girl, tries to find evidence of being the rightful owner of the source code stolen by head developer Antwin Hovachilik, while co-developer Walter Keyes McKay Mickey works at Tsunami. In the game, Molotov Girl catches guys attention by singing his favorite song, and he begins to deviate from his programming, taking a pair of sunglasses from a player robbing the bank. Guy sees Free City through the player's head-up display, HUD, and tries to catch up with Molotov Girl. Guy meets Millie at the stash, a well-guarded compound and that holds evidence of her source code. Thinking Guy is a novice player, she advises him to level up after their failed break-in. He's and co-worker Mouser, believing Guy to be a hacker disguised as an NPC, then successfully tried to ban from him from the game, rapidly progressing the game by completing the missions via good acts. Guy stands out from the other players 
It becomes a worldwide sensation of blue shirt guy. Guy helps Millie escape from the stash after her second failed break-in. Millie is, is bewildered when Guy will, wants to kiss her. At this function is unavailable in this game. He reveals to Millie that Guy is truly an NPC and that it is a self-awareness came from artificial intelligence code containing Millie's personal preferences that Keys had included in life itself. The original game is the duo to develop. This, in turn, left Guy to develop a romantic interest in Millie, while his interactions with, with other NPCs have led them to develop self-awareness. Keys agrees to help Millie retrieve, retrieve their code before Free City is wiped from Tsunami servers to make way for Free City. Two, when Millie got, tells Guy the truth of his situation, Guy becomes frustrated with his reality and breaks off their relationship. However, through the conversation with Buddy, Guy realizes that there was something more to their reality and returns to Millie. With Buddy's connections with the security guards, Guy successfully retrieves the evidence from the stash. As Guy's continued, Popularity threatens the launch of Free City 2. Antoine orders a reboot, which temporarily removes Guy's memories. Millie restores his sentience by kissing him, and he recalls the location of the island, the only part of the life itself, and proof of Millie in the in Key's original code. As Guy and Mol the Molotov girl travel to the island, Antoine as Mouser tried to kill them, but his attempts of, are subverted by Keys, who also streams the events. Antoine fires Keys and sends Dude, a muscular unfinished copy of Guy developed for Free City 2, into the game while he is overpowered. Guy puts his sunglasses on Dude, which distracts him and allows Guy to reach the island. Despite all Antoine destroying the city, by smashing the game servers with a fire axe. Before Antoine destroys the final server, Millie offers a deal to abandon her, her lawsuit and surrender the free city intellectual property to her and Keys in exchange for the profits from the game. Antoine accepts and the game's inhabitants are saved. Without Keys and Mouser's support, Free City 2 is a catastrophic failure at launch. While Antoine is ver vilified, by the media and arrested for theft and criminal damage, Keith, Mouser, and Millie release real life using their overcovered code, bringing Guy, Buddy, Dude, and the other Free City NPCs into it. In the game, Guy reveals to Millie that his code is in fact a love letter to her from Keys. Millie leaves the game, and she and Keys share a kiss. Meanwhile, Guy reunites with Dude and Buddy, and they begin to live their own lives in free life without having to follow their original free city code. Alright, also on Friday, we will be doing The Guns of Never Wrong, 1961 film. Here's a plot to this film. In 1943, the Axis powers planned an assault, an assault on the island of Kiros where 2,000 British soldiers or are marooned to display their military strength and competence convince, convince neutral Turkey to join them. Rescued by the Royal Navy is prevented by two massive radar directed large caliber guns on fictional nearby Navarone Island. When aerial bombing efforts fail, Ali, alive, Intelligence gathers a commando unit to infiltrate Navarone and destroy the guns. Led by Major Roy Franklin, Anthony Coyle, the team is composed of Captain Keith Mallory, Gregory Peck, a renowned spy and an officer with a long-range desert, desert group, LRDG, Colonel Colonel Andrea Stravo, Stavro, Anthony Quinn, from the defeated Big Army, Franklin's best friend Corporal Miller, David Mnibin, an explosives expert and former chemistry teacher, 
Franco American, Spiros pa Papademos, James Darren, a native and uh, uh, never on, uh, Butcher Brown, Stanley Baker, an engineer and expert knife fighter, disguised as free fisherman on a dis dis decrypted decrypted fishing vessel, they sail across the Aegean Sea where they successfully roam among the crew of the German patrol boat intercepting them. Later in the voyage, Mallory confides to Franklin that Sir Stavro had sworn to kill him after the war because Mallory was inadvertently responsible for the deaths of Stavro's, Stavro's wife and children after being shipwrecked on the coast of Navarone during the storm. The experienced mountaineer Mallory leads the team on a climb up of the cliff during which Franklin badly injures the, his leg while taking shelter in the mountains. Mallory stops Franklin from committing suicide and lies in to him in that him that their mission is only a diversion and that a major naval attack will be mounted on the coastal coast instead. They rendezvous rendezvous the two with two local residents resistance fighters, Spiros and Sister Maria, Irina Paz, Papas, and her best and her friend Nana. Yes, Scala, who, want, who was once captured and tortured by the Germans after, before escaping. The mission is continually dodged by German soldiers, but the group is eventually captured in the town of Mandracos by or the Lieutenant Muscle Walter Botel, while trying to find a doctor for Franklin, whose leg is infected with, with gangrene. While being interrogated by SS Hop Stumpfarther, Sissier, George Met Kill, Strap Stavro distracts the Germans and the team overpowered their captors. They escape in German uniforms, leaving Franklin behind to receive medical attention. In due course, Franklin is injected with scorplamine and gives up Mallory's risk. For misinformation, as Mallory had hoped, most forces leaves the fortress to counter the, expe the expected coastal attack upon infiltrating the village of Neveron. However, Miller discovers most of his explosives have, have been sabotaged by and deduces that Anna is a culprit. She confesses that she did not escape, but the but that the Germans recruited her as an as an informer in exchange uh, for her release. Mallory reluctantly prepares to execute Mana as a precaution against detection, but Maria shoots her instead. The team splits up. Mallory and Miller go to the for the guns. Stavro, yes? Okay. Love you too. Okay. Love you too. And spirals create distractions in town, assisted by local residents, and Maria and Brown steal a boat for their escape. Sparrows dies in a standoff with a German officer, and Brown is stabbed during the boat theft. Meanwhile, Mallory and Miller infiltrate the gun in placement, but set off and alarm when they seal the doors behind them. Miller plants explosives on the guns and prepares a large booby trap below a munition hoist with a trigger device set into the track of, of the hoist. The Germans eventually gain entry into the gun emplacement and diffuse the explosives and plant it on the guns. Meanwhile, Mallory and Miller make their escape down the cliff and are, and are picked up by, from the sea and by the stolen boat. A wounded St Stavro is also able to reach the sea and is held aboard by Mallory, thus resolving the blood feud between them. As the Allied destroyers trying to rescue the trapped British troops appear, the Germans open fire at them. When the, the hoist eventually reaches Miller's trigger, the hidden explosives set off the surrounding shells in a huge explosion, which destroys the guns and the entire fortress. Mallory's team safely reaches the British convoy, but Stavro 
shakes Mallory's hand and decides to return to Neverone, to Neverone with Maria. That with Rome, he has fallen in love. Mallory and Miller, returning home, observes observe the aftermath of their success from a destroyer. All right. Also on Friday, we will be doing Inglorious Bastards 2009 film. Here's a plot to this film. In 1941, SS Dread Her Friend Sans Londa interrogates French farmer Perrier La Pedit as to the whereabouts of a Jewish family. The J Dreyfuses, Linda suspects the Dreyfuses, are hid hiding from them under their flo floorboards, and in exchange for the Nazis not murdering his family, La Pedit tearfully confirms, confirms it. The soldiers shoot through the floorboards, killing all but one of the Dreyfuses. Shosana, uh, uh, the daughter, escapes. Three years later, Lieutenant Aldo Rain recruits Jewish American uh, soldiers to the Bastards, a commando unit formed uh, to install fear among Nazis by killing and scalping, scalping them. They include a sing Sergeant Doni, the bear Jew, Donowitz, Sergeant Hugo St St Stiglitz, a Rue German soldier, a Corporal Will William William Wicky, the Boots translator in German, Adolf Hitler interviews German soldier, Private Boats, the only survivor of the bastard attack, who reveals that Rain carved a sweat sweat swastika into Bolt Butt's forehead. Shosana Dreyfus is living in Paris. Operating a cinema under the name Emmanuel Mimiux, she meets Frederick Zoller, a German sniper farmed for killing 250 Allied soldiers in a battle. Zoller stars in a Nazi propaganda film, Souls der Nation, Nation's Pride, infatuated, infatuated with Shosana. Zoller convinces Joseph Goebbels. Goebbels to hold of the premiere of her cinema, Linda, the head of security for the premiere, interrogates Sana, Shosana. Shosana plots with her Afro French lover and projectionist Marcel to sell to set the cinema ablaze during the premiere, killing the Nazi leaders in attendance. Meanwhile, British commando Lieutenant Archie Hickox is recruited to lead the British attack. On the premiere with the bastards, Hickox, along with Stiggitz and Wiki, goes to a tavern in German occupied northern France to meet with German film star Bridget von Hemersmark, an undercover Allied agent who will be attending the premiere. Hickox event and eventually draws the attention of Weimacht, surgeon Willem, and Major Dieter. Pilstrom, giving himself away by using a British hand gesture rather than the German one, the recovers. Blown, a gunfight ensues, killing everyone except Sergeant Willem and von Hemersmark, who is shot in the leg. Rain arrives and, and negotiates with Willem for von Hemersmark's release, but she shoots Willem when he lowers his guard. Rain, believing how von Hammersmark set his men up, tortures her, but she convinces him she is loyal and reveals Hitler will be attending the premiere. Rain decides to continue with himself. Donowitz and Omar, Omar, taking the place of Hickox, Stiglitz, and Wiki, later Olenda investigates the tavern and finds the von Hammersmark's show, shoe, and a napkin. With her, sig with her signature. Rain, Donowitz, and Omar, Omar attend to the with premiere and with timed explosives tra strapped to their ankles. Linda takes von Hemersmark into a room, verifies the shoe from the tavern and hits her and kills her. Rain and another bastard, Smithson, Utivik, are taken prisoner. Linda has Rain contact with supporter the supporter to cut a deal. He will allow the mission to proceed in exchange for a safe passage through the Allied lines. 
of pardon and other privileges. During the screening, Zoller slips away to the projection room and attempts to force himself to uh, show Sana. She shoots him. Zoller shoots and kills her before she, he dies. As the film reaches a good climax, Shosana's splice in footage tells the audience that they are about to be killed by a Jew, having locked in the auditorium doors. Marcel ignites a pile of flammable film behind the scene as Shosana's image laughs and the theater goes up in flames. Omer and Donowitz break into an opera, the opera box containing Hitler and Go Goebbels submachine gunning them both de to death, then firing into the crowd until the bombs go off, killing everyone in the theater. Linda and his radio operator drive Rain and Utivik into Allied tra territory, where they surrender themselves. Rain shoots the radio operator before ordering Utivik to scalp him. Rain and Lin has Linda restrained and carves a swastika into his forehead, professing it, professing it to be his inter masterpiece. All right. Also on Friday, we will be doing Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Barden, 2021 film. Here's a plot. Here's a premise in this film. The film follows the life and career of Anthony Barden who died by suicide on June 8, 2018, at the age of 61, while on location in France, France, where his CNN show Parts Unknown. The documentary features interviews with David Chang and Ray Eric Rupert, as well as members of the production crew from Parts Unknown. The title alludes to Roadrunner, a song by the modern lovers that appears in the film. Alright, that's all the whole real releases we got. So second, we will be doing a TV series over our home releases. It is about Tari Tari. Episode 6. Wait. Okay, no, that's episode 7. Okay, episode 7 of Tari Tari. As the club tries to decide what to do for the school culture festival, Konetsu is taunted by her former club members. Konetsu soon learns that, in order to get them on the main stage for the festival, they will have to be approved by Naga and Ayoko. Meanwhile, Sawa is at odds with her father, who sees her ambition of becoming a professional jockey as simply playing, play, playing around. For some unknown reason, Sawa starts Going on, going on, going a diet and begins skipping a lot of meals, causing Kanatsu and Wakano to worry about her. After the girls attend a musical, musical together, Wakano looks to learn composition in order to finish the song my hero was writing, while also considering her own career. Meanwhile, so is left fatigue from her forced dieting and ends up falling off of her horse during mounting mounted archery practice. All right. That's all the TV series over over home releases we got. So third, we will be doing Emma Monkey Pictures and Roman Cow Productions and Donkey Teeth Company shorts. It is about Tom and Jerry. Saltwater Tabby, in 1947. In a summary, it says, Tom Wu's Toddle Toodles on the Beach. Alright, that's, that's all the shorts we got. So, so, so forth, we will be doing Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus 5G series. It is about it is about Mei Mei, who tries to convince Kaide to go on to go on stage to have her speech, but Kaide was afraid and so never saw potatoes before, and she runs away. As Santa Bataba begins to to woo Kaide Kino, after Mei Mei convinces 
try to Aquino to write a script, but um, but kind of Aquino refuses. But then when, or when maybe writes herself in her into Kari Aquino's speech, she takes it over to Kari Aquino, and Kari Aquino finally gets her speech, and she and she and they applaud to him, applaud to her, and she smiles back when after she nervously, she nervously talking about her speech to Mimi and San Potaba. All right. That's all. That's all I got for today. Let's do some work now. Hey, guys. Hi. 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 Um, would you like to come with me to um to Epcot to War Showcase? Cause we're going to a uh, going to Mexico Pavilion today. Okay, let's go then. Okay, we'll be right with you. Okay, good. <laughs>